Welcome to this video. This video explains how we could use submodeling feature of Abacus software. Sometimes we have a global model, but we are interested to investigate more details of a local region of this global model. In these cases, we can use submodeling as we will explain this video. In our previous video, we have performed modeling of a whole plate in plain stress situation. We use this simulation as the global model in this video. We are interested to find a stress distribution near the hole by refined elements or even we can use different material for this region. So we define this region as the sub-model and use the global model results like displacement or stresses as the boundary condition for the submodel. For creating the submodel, we can construct a totally new model or we can use the information of the global model and change it. We can save as the file or create a new model by copying the model and changing it. We go to the model and by copy model, copy the global model and rename it as the submodel we want to have only the region around the hole therefore we cut the part by cut extrude and only keep the region around the hole we draw a circle with the radius of our interested region and remove the part outside the circle we just trim this part of the circle and now we have the submodel around the hole which is our interested region we do not change the property what we can do if you like and an important thing is in model attribute we show that this is a sub model and enter the name of odb file of the global model we also could choose an option here which shows that whether we are submodeling between a shell model and a solid model or between two solid models as in current submodeling. We just enter the part in assembly and we do not change the step. In load module, we should redefine the symmetric boundary condition in left and bottom side. Because we changed the geometry, the boundary condition should be edited. This boundary condition exists in our previous model and only we edit the region because we cut the edges. The most important part of the submodeling is defining the boundary condition for the new border in the submodel. As you can see, this border is new comparing to the global model and we should apply appropriate boundary condition to this border from the global model. There are two ways for applying boundary condition to the submodel. The first way is node-based method. In this method, nodal degrees of freedom from the global model are interpolated and applied to the border of the submodel. For using node-based method, we use create boundary condition and then the load step and from other we choose the submodel and we pick the border and here we have some settings the tolerance means that the distance between the border and meshes from the goal level model and we can choose it 
by relative or absolute distance. The relative means the distance relative to the mesh sizes and also we have the minimum option which compare the relative and absolute values and use the smaller one. The calculated nodal values of the global model from the meshes which are inside this tolerance with regards to the border will be used to interpolate the value of boundary condition on the border. Then we should enter the relative value or absolute value with regards to our choice. After that we should enter the degrees of freedom that we will bring here from the global model which are displacements in the first and second direction in this case. In three dimensional problems we should enter three displacements or in some cases like shells there is also rotational degrees of freedom. In the next step we enter the number of the step that we are interested to do submodeling in it and if we want we can scale the result of the global model here. If the global model is a linear problem while submodel is nonlinear, we can use a scaling the result of the global model to compute the result of various amount of loading. We also could use surface-based submodeling procedure. In this method, we apply a stress from the global model to the border. For this purpose, we can use create load, then pick the submodel border, and here, similar to the node-based submodeling, we have some setting. Finally, we should delete or deactivate the load which was applied to the right border of the global model. Now we can go to the mesh module. In this type of modeling, we are free to use different type of elements and different size of elements for submodel with regards to the global model. We use quadrilateral and structured mesh for the submodel and also we set the mesh to be plain stress. Here we can use quadratic elements because they are more accurate in modeling the stress concentration and we also could use any size of seed here. We use respectively very fine mesh for the submodel and mesh the submodel. The elements could be different, they are quadratic and they are finer from the global model. Now we create another job because we need the ODB file from the global model and using the submodel model we define another job and submit it. Now we can go to the results and see the submodel results. As you can see here, we compute the stress concentration around the hole by finer mesh and the result is near the analytical results which should be 3. We also could delete the elements to have a better control of stress distribution around the hole. For this purpose, we use option and comma and choose to show only free edge of the submodel. Now we have a clear stress distribution around the hole and can use this figure in our reports. Please notice that even we can use nonlinear material property for the submodel or define more details of material like damage in the submodel. We can also define more details of geometry in the submodel or use submodeling between a shell and a solid. For watching videos about these topics, please subscribe to our channel and continue watching our works. See you guys in our next videos.